When considering playing a round of golf, Alaska is probably not the first destination that comes to mind. But for some people, the game just doesn't get any better than playing fish hook, a lynx style pasture course near Palmer, Alaska. Kind of lynxy, nothing too flat. For us, we get to work on our game. The core group of people that come here, they've been coming here for years. Um, it has a hometown feel, and the owners are very nice to us and know us by name. And then you have this gorgeous view every time you come here. I mean, you just can't beat it. It's definitely Lake Style Course, and that's what we've always been trying to go for. So we have the big, wide open fairways, the huge greens, all with the traditional lengths and feel. And the same thing with the natural grass bunkers and stuff, like here and on the left of the green stuff, keep it tall, shaggy, kind of like Scotland. Given challenges such as the extreme weather, not to mention the problems associated with growing turf grass in Alaska, this is not exactly thought of as a prime location for a golf course. My dad started the course when I was about six years old. It started as a, just a driving range. And then a few years later, he put in three holes, then it went to six holes, and then to nine holes. So it's, this is our 19th season, and it's been run by pretty much family the entire time. And since my dad passed, it's been mostly just me and my brother. The biggest challenge will be the weather. Sometimes we don't get sun at all. It's overcast every single day. We have very severe conditions. A lot of times the grass won't grow. If it's dry, we can't get grass to germinate. And we don't have irrigation, which is probably our main main challenge that we face because we have to go out with a hose and a truck and water, you know, two, three times a day if we could. On the course these days we're growing a lot of creeping red fescues and also um, champagne creeping red fescue. We switched to those for the greens. Only because it's more durable, it takes less water. On the fairways we're using a lot of just uh, bent. It's basically what's been here for 30 years and it has such well-established roots that we don't have to touch it. We don't have to fertilize or water our fairways or roughs. It's really nice. Tea boxes are kind of the same. We're growing a very special blend of dandelion in Alaska. Um, and we're going to try to switch these to fescue. As the course was developed, desirable trees were planted to replace the indigenous trees like cottonwoods, which along with the pesky dandelions caused maintenance issues on this golf course. We usually dedicate three to four days out of the week just for cutting. We got our fairways, roughs, and surrounds. That there is 20 hours of cutting with our units. And then the greens, we cut three times a week, just keep up on it. When dandelions come out, we have to cut a little bit extra. We cut dandelions, the next day they pop up again. You have nothing but dandelions covering your entire fairway. So when that happens, we cut the fairways maybe twice a week. These are two very young, ambitious siblings who are determined to carry on their late father's legacy. They often sense the spotlight that's on them and sometimes even feel a bit under-trusted. But Ryan and Rose are showing that the proof is in the pudding, or in this case, it's on the green. And the very personal way in which they manage fish hook means a lot to those who golf here. We kind of provide a unique experience. It's not as intimidating as most golf courses you go to. You come in the parking lot, you look around, the average person who's not a good golfer, doesn't have a whole lot of experience or money necessarily, can come here and kind of feel comfortable like they can go out and golf and no one's going to judge them. You're not going to have PGA players hitting over their heads and telling them what they're doing wrong. A lot of the customers, they always tell me that they come out here because they're just learning they're not good and they're not pressured like they would be at other courses where they're always put into a foursome with people who play golf and if they're not good they feel like they're, they don't belong there or they're not welcome there. So I think the atmosphere here gives everybody a chance to learn the game and start playing. Ryan and Rose's father built this course, and now they are proudly carrying things forward along with a few of his lessons. It's green, lush, and beautiful. And then a little bit farther, you see just jagged mountain ridges surrounding you. And it's kind of weird. You have this little, like, man-made utopia surrounded by just natural wilderness. Hard work. It's out here, you know, we work sometimes 12, 13 hours a day. But he mostly told us, if you don't love it, don't do it. So. We've kind of taken that to heart, and we do it because we love it.